On September 4th through the 23rd, 2016, a major event will occur in the old city of Jerusalem. It will bring together actors, artists, musicians, and persons in the media from around the world. What on earth are they planning to do in Jerusalem? At an event that ends on September 23rd, leaders from Roman Catholic, Muslim, and Jewish communities will gather for one of the longest interfaith services in history, right there in the old city of Jerusalem, right there where the Lord Jesus walked, right there where the temples once stood. They will offer worship to a God under the banner of ecumenism. It is there they plan to do away with categories of religion and ignore differences. The service will combine three monotheistic faiths under one roof in a house of worship for all believers. One part of the event will occur from September 5th through the 11th and will bring together Jew, Muslim, and Christian under, quote, a passion for Jerusalem, in which they can all coexist temporarily under the wings of the Almighty, unquote. Some of the headlines on the website for this event talk about dissolving boundaries and coming together in worship of the same God. Another part of the event will occur from September 12th through the 23rd. The leaders of this event which is called Makudashet, will perform an 11-day consecration. If you aren't aware, a consecration happens when somebody performs a ceremony, declaring something as holy. The fact that Muslims, Jews, and Roman Catholics are gathering for a consecration means that they are all declaring their interfaith religion, their new God, to be holy. This is not good and may signal the beginning of the one world religion that Pope Francis has worked so hard to achieve in the year 2016. The Vatican indeed is one of the chief proponents of the ecumenical movement around the world and in Israel. For the past three years, Pope Francis has worked tirelessly toward a new world religion in which all denominations are brought together as one. If you look at Francis's outreach over the past three years and specifically in 2016, you'll find somebody who has openly condemned evangelical Christianity and the belief that you must have a personal relationship with Jesus. He has openly warned that this belief is dangerous. He has also equated the spread of the gospel under evangelical Christianity to jihadism. In the meantime, he has done quite a bit of outreach to every other religion in the entire world. Why is this happening? The extent of Francis's outreach to other denominations in 2016 alone has been mind-boggling. In February, Francis held an emergency meeting with Patriarch Kyril of Russia for the first time since the 1054 schism. Kyril then went directly to Antarctica, where he performed a bizarre religious ceremony, consecrating the land and water surrounding the continent. Francis has also done outreach to Patriarch Bartholomew of Turkey, in which both leaders voice support for the migrant crisis and called for more migrants to enter Europe. In May, Francis met with Al-Azhar of Egypt, who is the head of Sunni Islam. In January, Francis became the third pontiff ever to visit Rome's major synagogue. He has also hosted Jewish religious and political leaders at the Vatican. In June, Francis outreached to the Armenians in July, Pope Francis visited Poland and told all of the young people in the audience to, quote, believe in a new humanity. In August, Pope Francis won a huge initiative with U.S. Lutherans. A document called the Declaration of the Way was passed by a majority of 931 to 9. It recognizes that there is no longer church-dividing issues 
between Lutherans and Roman Catholics. This means that 3.7 million U.S. Lutherans are now absorbed into the new world religion. Also in July, Francis was the driving force behind a ceremony in the United States called Together, organized to bring all Christians in front of a 6,660 in Jobelisk, or the phallus of Osiris, for worship. One of the major symbols we saw at Together 2016 was the Ouroboros, which is the serpent eating its own tail. The earliest legend of the Ouroboros has to do with the coming of Osiris, the god of the underworld. The Ouroboros is a highly occult symbol signifying the end of an eon, or the end of time. In occultism, the end of one eon usually results in a reset, brought about by some cataclysmic event. When used together, the obelisk and the Ouroboros show us the coming of Osiris to inhabit his temple at the beginning of the next eon, which is the start of the Golden Age. The fact that this symbol was put on display throughout Francis's Together 2016 event is very demonic. What is Francis doing, and why is he doing it? The answer is that he's merely carrying out a role, playing his part in the creation of a new world religion. In previous videos, I have discussed a book written in 1908 by a man who was ill for much of his life. He writes about how a character named Father Francis defects from Roman Catholicism to follow the Antichrist. In this book, Father Francis would become the leading proponent of the new world religion and worship of the Antichrist. Just recently, Francis has used death of one of his priests in France and an assault on another priest in Belgium to invite Muslims into Christian cathedrals and churches for worship. For the past month throughout Europe, since the attacks on the Catholic clergy, there has been a major drive by Francis to bring together Muslim and Christian, and his efforts are working. He isn't attempting to evangelize these Muslims and to convert them. Instead, he is allowing them to bring worship of Allah into the churches in Europe. It has been prophesied that a religion of the New World Order would be established. It would dissolve boundaries between faiths. All would come together, united, in worship of the false light. There are Luciferians in history who predicted that Christianity and all religions would eventually collapse, making way for the religion of pure Luciferianism. A couple of these individuals was Luciferian and 33rd degree Grand Wizard Albert Pike, as well as Luciferian Helena Blavatsky. She viewed Christianity as a major challenge to the agenda of unveiling a new world religion. Christianity, in her opinion, would have to be done away with in order to unveil the new religion. We also have warnings from a former Jesuit who was murdered in 1999 that a one-world religion was in the making. It was an ecumenical religion that was being set up for all to follow. Malachi Martin told us a secret in an interview with Art Bell before he died. Luciferians had infiltrated the Vatican and were planning to set up a new religion, one they believed would last for 1,000 years. Amongst Luciferian organizations, there is a prophecy that if they can invade the citadel, and that's their name for the Vatican, they will have power for a thousand years. How close are they? Very close. You might remember when Francis came to America last September. We saw a major push toward the full ecumenical agenda. Francis's itinerary started on September 23rd, 
2015, one day after he landed in the United States. He had set his sight on finalizing what his predecessor, Pope John XXIII, had set into motion on September 23, 1959. It was on this day John would offer a prayer that would begin the downfall of the Roman Catholic Church. A document would be penned declaring a new outreach to all religions in the world as children of the same God. Without a doubt, Vatican II is remembered as Catholicism's greatest push toward the new world religion. Vatican II would change everything about the actions of all future popes. It was now about piecing together a new religion, one that would be ready, waiting for the coming of the capstone. Pope Francis is truly preparing that new faith right now for all in the world to become a part of.